Hello and welcome back to EME 6429, Human Performance Improvement. I'm Dr. Tim Boylow, and in this final course module presentation, we will take a step back to reflect on our journey together this semester as you finish up with the gap and cause analysis assignment. We'll also review the material covered specific to the different analyses and processes for performance analysis in preparation for the course exam in module seven. So let's get to it. Taking a brief look at the agenda, we begin with a review of HPT basics. We'll take a final look at systems thinking as a paradigm for considering the different parts of a performance system. To provide context, we'll review the key concepts of the HPT process model. Next, we'll review the relationship between performance, gap, and cause analysis. And as always, we conclude with the looking ahead slide. We've learned a lot about HPT in this semester as it relates to performance improvement. And we did this by conducting performance analysis to fully understand the need or opportunity for intervention. We know that HPT represents a systemic and systematic set of processes and tools to improve performance in organizational settings, including performance gap and cause analysis, which of course is the focus of this course. This leads to intervention selection and design, followed by implementation and change management. Evaluation is integral throughout the HPT model, including formative, summative, and confirmative, using meta-evaluation methods for validation in each stage of the model. And recall from the earlier discussions that the practice of HPT is standards-driven, and the HPT model is closely aligned with the ISPI as well as IBSTPI standards. We've talked a lot about systems thinking in this course, and indeed, the HPT model is grounded in systems thinking principles. Systems thinking acknowledges the relationship between the organizational components, as we saw in your discussions related to the glass manufacturer case study. Systems thinking also acknowledges the importance of having a macro view or big picture view of the organization in terms of how performance is impacted by external forces, such as market demand, as well as consideration for how the chosen interventions may impact organizational balance from a systems perspective. We need to consider how a change in one department will affect other departments. How might an organizational process change affect other upstream as well as downstream processes within the organization? To answer these types of questions requires a systems thinking mindset. To summarize the key concepts for the practice and discipline of HPT, remember that it is research-based and model-driven. Also, during the performance analysis phase, the HPT practitioner must remain solution neutral in order to fully consider all data sources and to avoid bias or the perception of a solution in search of a problem. Remember that HPT should be a collaborative process requiring full input and participation by all stakeholders from across the organization. The goal is transparency in order to build relationships focused on bringing about positive change. And finally, HPT should be viewed as a holistic process, applying systems thinking to all aspects of organizational performance. To illustrate this from a holistic perspective, here is the HPT model once again as provided in the text. You should refer to this to help guide your completion of your gap and cause analysis assignment. Pay particular attention to the application of Gilbert's behavior engineering model as you complete cause analysis for each of the gaps that have been identified by considering the information, instrumentation, and motivation performance supports as they apply to both the environmental and individual performance domains. So as we begin our review for performance analysis, recall that performance analysis starts with organizational analysis to identify desired performance. 
We ask ourselves, what does the organizational culture look like in terms of its stated mission, vision, goals, and structure? What distinguishes the business in terms of its competitors, market share, and how the organization sees itself? It's important to look for discrepancies between the departmental and the organizational perspectives. This is particularly the case with large or globally distributed business units to ensure alignment across the different levels of management. You need to consider the relationship between a perceived problem and the desired performance, in other words. Recall from the Rumler text that the link to business goals is critical, and there should also be a clear picture of ideal and achievable targets for desired performance. The second half of performance analysis is environmental analysis. Environmental analysis provides a snapshot of the realities of the current performance state or actual performance. The external environment represents the mega or world view in terms of the market forces and business climate the organization currently exists within. The work view describes the work processes, flows, procedures, and responsibilities, providing a macro view of the organization. This gives us a picture of how production assets are distributed within the organization. The workplace represents a micro view of the environment in terms of the tools, supports, policies, ergonomics, etc., all directly related to job performance. And finally, the worker view represents the second half of a micro view of job performance in terms of knowledge, skills, abilities, capacity, and motivations at the individual performance level or repertoire. Following performance analysis, we move on to gap analysis. The gap in performance is simply the difference between the desired and actual performance. So we begin with identification of the discrepancies that currently exist between desired and actual performance. We also need to be forward thinking in terms of identifying discrepancies that are likely to occur in the future. Once the gaps are identified, they are categorized as positive, neutral, or negative in terms of impact and whether the gaps are current or future. The final step in gap analysis is to determine the relative criticality of each gap. We do this to determine which gaps to address, as well as for ordering and prioritization. And cause analysis represents the transition point in performance analysis as we prepare to consider interventions. The previous steps provide the what in terms of performance gap identification. In cause analysis, we direct our attention to causation to determine the why, in, in, as far as why the gap or gaps exist. And we do this by asking, why does the gap exist? What are the drivers behind these identified deficiencies in performance? When did the problem first occur? And under what circumstances does the gap exist? The focus of gap analysis is on determining the root cause for each gap in performance. This requires us to dig deep by considering environmental and individual domains of performance, looking at information, instrumentation, and motivation among each of the do those domains. In order to get to the why in terms of root cause analysis, we utilize Gilbert's BEM along with other tools and techniques that you discussed in the activity for Module 5. We bring this presentation to a close with a brief look ahead at next steps. Specifically, there are two activities included in part three of this module. The first is a discussion activity to reflect on performance analysis in the context of your personal improvement experiences, performance improvement experiences rather. The second is to complete the performance gap in cause analysis assignment. We conclude the module with the summary in part four. This will help you synthesize what we've covered this week, providing additional context. Looking ahead, the remaining course module is the final exam. There will be no presentations, no reading assignments, and no new content in module seven. The exam format, which will be our focus, 
is short essay, open book, and open note. The deliverable is a Word document to be submitted via the assignment section in Canvas. Essentially, I'm asking you to summarize what we've learned in this course, providing a solid foundation for the HPT concentration, whether you are pursuing the HPT certificate or simply looking to inform your, pr your practice in performance improvement. This brings us to the end of the final presentation for HPT Human Performance Improvement. Until we meet again, this is Dr. Tim Boileau wishing each of you a pleasant learning experience, and I hope to see you all again online.